Hello everybody and welcome to the Import Export Hub channel newsreel. Boring Bogdan here, your host for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. I hope that you are all doing great. Thanks for uh, taking uh, some of your time in order to watch me perorate. And uh, guys, without making this uh, intro too lengthy, let's start with the quiz question for this video. And it goes like this. So to whom did Mozambique export the most in 2021 in terms of value? And the options here are India, uh, South Africa or the Netherlands. And uh, guys, the correct answer is South Africa, to whom uh, Mozambique exported $855 million worth of goods. It was followed by India with some $803 million, while the Netherlands was the third largest export destination for uh, Mozambique with some $561 million. And uh, now, guys, that uh, you know Mozambique's uh, largest export destinations, let's take a look at the Fretas Index, which uh, currently sits at uh, $2,528, a 9% drop week on week, with uh, big movers here involving Europe to South America East Coast sub index, who went up 1% while the sub-index connecting China to North America West Coast was down a whopping 26%. And if you ask me, guys, uh, this is an important indicator that uh, the price war had begun uh, for uh, this uh, trade lane, at least, with uh, the cash-rich top 10 companies, so the big guys trying to squeeze out the smaller opportunistic ones who entered in a bull market and who were attached to high charted rates. And now that the freights are crumbling, they have no other option but to leave uh, this uh, former lucrative uh, lane. And uh, don't worry, the same goes for the cross-west lanes, so China to Europe, basically. Uh, and even though the, rate, the freights are falling, they are still uh, holding tight, as uh, previously I've anticipated a bigger volatility here. And now it seems that uh, all the eyes are on two things. Uh, the transatlantic routes and the second one is related to how things will evolve as we approach the Chinese New Year at the end of uh, January 2023. And of course, only time will tell how things will unfold. There are a couple of things that I anticipate for the next year, if you want. Uh, the, the dissolving of uh, the 2M alliance and uh, the other one is I'm still waiting for the new builds order cancellation coming from the big guys. But again, these are just uh, some of, uh, of my uh, premonitions, if you want. Sometimes I like to publicly embarrass myself. Uh, but anyways, this is another story. So let's dive into the news here. And uh, the first one comes from Vietnam Plus uh, VM as Vietnam exported its first uh, batch of fresh pomelo to the United States. Strangely enough, for me at least, there was some kind of cer ceremony there. But anyways, it seems that uh, this uh, first shipment of uh, fresh pomelo comes after five years of negotiations between the United States and Vietnam with some dedicated planting areas and strict inspection and uh, packaging facilities as the United States regulators are very, very picky. But then again, so do the European ones. So uh, good news here, and I'm sure that Vietnam is going to challenge both uh, South Africa's and Mexico's supremacy on the US market. Now, moving slowly westwards, my second news come, comes from ING Think, and it covers India's uh, GDP, who in the third quarter rose at 6.3% uh, year on year, which is slightly exceeding um, market expectations, with the goal of 6% uh, for the full year uh, seeming uh, plausible, uh, making India one of the fastest growing economies in Asia. We have a nice chart here with uh, India's uh, GDP by expenditure for uh, these uh, three quarters. But uh, what caught my attention, guys, is the fact that India is still relying on the service sector. Uh, in what uh, concerns uh, value-added uh, contribution. And here, let's face it, India had and has a competitive advantage for uh, quite some years. 
And now, as the author suggested, uh, India should broaden its economic uh, base, its economic footprint, if you want, if should want to capture some of the companies uh, decoupling from China. Anyways, guys, if you want to read the entire article, you have the link uh, below, as usual. As now, I'll move to my third, yes, th third news. Uh, it involves India again, uh, uh, together with Australia, who seem to have uh, reached a trade deal, the so-called Australia-India Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement, which from uh, December 29th this year will deliver new market access uh, opportunities for both countries. As uh, this article comes from the Australia, uh, Australian Trade Minister website, uh, the focus is more or less on Australia's benefits and opportunities, but given the fact that uh, this is a um, bilateral trade agreement, these apply to India's benefits and opportunities as well. And uh, if you ask me, India right now is embarking on a glorious journey where every major country wants to court it, Australia here is just one example. Uh, the European Union, for example, just uh, relaunched the negotiations with uh, India in June this year. Well, the big question for me at least uh, remains if the United States will be willing to enter in a, uh, this kind of uh, bilateral trade agreement with India, removing, if you, uh, if you ask me, the, uh, from the scope of this uh, free trade agreement um, pharma sector. But again, guys, this is a wait and see game. Things can change very, very quickly from one day to the next, uh, at least from a geopolitical point of view. So let's move to my fourth and last uh, news for you, which is coming from UNCTAD as the review of maritime transport for uh, 2022 was uh, released just a couple of days ago and it's worth highlighting a couple of things and don't worry guys i won't bother you with uh, buzzwords like supply chain resilience or volatility i think we had enough in the last uh, two years or so instead i will cover the pressures that uh, the container shipping companies are receiving from the authorities uh, and um, regulatory bodies from all over the world in what concerns newer and greener vessels, which of course uh, will add to the cost of operating them. Therefore, the users will have to pay more in terms of uh, freights. So expect some uh, slighter, bigger freights in the next uh, couple of years, of course, after the market uh, would have found a new normal so this is the first thing that i wanted to cover another uh, highlight that i wanted to cover is related to poor performance and uh, connectivity or the foreland but uh, personally here i disagree with um, those uh, who wrote this uh, article uh, not the countries should improve the performance of their ports and uh, their respective connectivity, but the private, I repeat, the private entities operating in those ports. And uh, this should be a wake-up call, if you want, for all the port authorities in the world. Uh, a bigger involvement is needed when uh, dealing with private operators. Which uh, brings me to my last thing that I wanted to highlight here, which is covering one of my favorite topics, guys. And uh, here, countries and uh, competition uh, authorities should protect uh, competition and level the playing field. And uh, we have here a nice uh, chart that shows us how the top four and top ten carriers increased their market shares in this uh, last decade. We have also some statistics about the top 20 carriers who almost doubled their market share, but also how vertical integration basically has given carriers and uh, their respective alliances stronger and uh, bargaining position vis-a-vis -vis port authorities, as they now have two seats at uh, the table, as the article suggests here, as both tenants of terminals and uh, providers of uh, shipping services. And here, personally, I might add uh, at least two seats at this table, um, tugboat operators and logistics providers. So basically, in what concerns the port authorities, some of the carriers have already closed the loop and uh, now they can create their own micro environment, if you want, uh, even though pundits, um, 
in uh, the shipping industry argued that competition and market forces are working uh, very well. Supply and demand are um, balancing themselves. It's everything uh, 100 percent uh, pure and safe. Sorry, guys, I beg to differ. And uh, somebody really, really needs to address this issue. And uh, don't forget, consortia block extension uh, review is underway. And if you ask me, the decades uh, old rules um, have to be brought to the 21st century independently of the strategic uh, geopolitical assets these companies give to their host uh, governments. And uh, guys, with this personal and very, very biased opinion, uh, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you've liked it. Don't forget to hit whatever button you like uh, above or below this video. And as usual, until next time, keep your business safe. Thanks.